Jeff, did we get any questions on the chat? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're going to come in, but let me give you this first one. How do you add a C scan from doctor on a disc? Say that again. <clears throat> How do you add a C scan from doctor on a disc? Uh, if you have something that you want to add as a document, you can go into document manager and you can update, update any, like say x-ray files or test results or things like that, that you have there. Awesome. What is considered family? Family are uh, dependents um, that are living under the same roof. Uh, so they have to be dependents as in uh, children, um, people that are under your care, uh, if that makes sense. Legal dependents. Uh Awesome. Family is considered dependents and also your legal spouse. All right. Uh, a college students, question mark, whatever that means. If they're still dependents and they're living under the same roof and maybe abroad at school or something like that, then they could be part of your um, part of your family. Perfect. Um, is this available in 50 states? Uh, in every state that offers telehealth. And do we have a list of what those would be? We do. There's only two or three, I think, that don't offer telehealth, and I'll get that over to you guys after this meeting. Awesome. Uh, what about college students out of the house? If they're under 18 years old and they're still considered a dependent, then that's fine. And they would also need to have updated where their residence is. So, for example, you have a minor who's still a dependent but away at school, and they're currently a resident in a different state, like at school, then you would want to make sure that their health record represents that. Awesome. I could answer Charlotte's yes. Girlfriend and boyfriend are two single memberships. Yes. yes. Uh, availability in Texas. It is available in Texas. All right. Uh, there is a family rate and an individual rate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Age limits. Jeff Vague. So for an individual membership, you'd have to be 18 or older. Um, if you are the parent or guardian and you have minors, of course, you can add them and there's no age limit when they're a dependent. Okay. Can doctors write home health orders? Prescription pickup or home delivery. Uh, right now we, are, we don't have, but we are planning on our roadmap to do uh, like home delivery for, for, for ongoing prescription deliveries. Um, right now there are a lot of pharmacies near your house that will allow you to pick up and there's a, a searchable map where you can set your preference and you can change that every time you call in if that answers. So the one right below it says home health is like orders for a visiting nurse to do, for example, do to do wound care. Oh, I understand. So this is virtual telehealth. Um, it is possible to do a virtual telehealth consultation, possibly get some medication prescribed, but in the event that you need a physical, um, some physical work to be done, you would still need to go into that practitioner physically. So I think the answer to that is right now, we're not sending anyone to your home. Is the app fully functional? It is. So this is actually something you can access via the web. So you do not need to go to the app store to download it. If you have a, a good internet connection, um, or if you wanna just dial in on a phone, a smartphone, you'd need to go to the, the web address and log in and there's no need to download any app. So it's, it's a web application and it's available if you have a good internet connection. I'm sorry, I thought the doctor was charging an additional fee. If not, how is doctor making money? I don't know if- So we have a network of uh, physicians, EpicMD physicians that are available 24 seven to answer and they're part of our panel. So your consultation costs uh, on this particular membership are covered in either the $29 or the $49. And the benefit here is that you have, again, unlimited use of those. And that means if you have, you know, three or four kids at home that frequently get ill, or they need um, antibiotics or other types of medicine, and it's difficult for you to get out of the house, you can, without limit, right, um, you have the ability to call in as long as you have that monthly membership, you're covered. And there's no copay for this membership every time that you call in. Hopefully. Wow. That answers. That's a that's a significant value. How much does the doctor make per call? So there's no uh, consult. There's no copay during the call. I think we spoke to this a little bit earlier in the in the meeting. Um, your membership fee gets you unlimited uh, 
telehealth uh, visits with a consultation, right? Whether that's by phone or whether it's by video or whether you call the advice line, it's completely unlimited for you as long as you have the monthly membership. The doctor is covered with the, the Epic MD network that they're in. So there's no, there's no fee that goes to the doctor from your visit, if that makes sense. Lou, you had answered this. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah Lindsay, I think, I think the, the question is, because right now we're talking about our, our, our virtual care membership, the single and the family. I think the question regarding the, the, um, the fiduciary opportunity for the physician, when we deploy the platform in October, um, we have that set at $50 uh, for a virtual care visit for those members. Mm -hmm. That they're seeing. So if that's the question, Jeff, there'll be a $50 remuneration for physicians who are seeing virtual care in a primary care setting for a primary care uh, based visit for those Epic MD uh, members. So, and then that's being paid by who, Lou? Epic MD. Okay, just so you guys understand that. Okay. Will nutritionists, weight loss doctors, et cetera, be able to use this platform? And it says midwives, question mark. If they're interested in becoming a part of our Epic MD network of doctors, then they can contact us. Um, we have a network right now that includes, like I, I mentioned, mostly um, internal medicine and family practice uh, practitioners. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah. What, according to Lindsay, according to Jack, Jack Carabies, um, when we have and we launch the platform in October, mm -hmm. there will be multiple specialties that will have access to the platform mm -hmm. and they'll be able to get the free platform and they will be able to see patients. However, the remuneration and the ability for a physician or provider to get paid by Epic for a virtual care visit will be, um, will be based upon primary care based visits. So if a provider is, is in a scope of practice of primary care, then they would be able to see those primary care visits of those Epic MD members. Do you see anybody like in the 70s or the 80s? Yeah, absolutely. And especially as you know, you're looking to have, you have maybe some ongoing um, health concerns or, you know, maybe there's allergy medications or things like that. There's absolutely no health restriction as you get older. Um, there's just a legal restriction for, uh, you know, people signing themselves up for telehealth that they need to be 18 or older as a legal adult, but there's well, no. Yeah. My, my, my question is, is that a, a lot of these older people are kind of in a mindset where they want to, they do not want to do electronics. So I think that's kind of the, where we're going at with that. Do you, do you, do you see people that are using the electronics? And it really, it really depends. I, I think uh, a lot of mobile technology has become invasive. I'd say everywhere. Um, I've got a 93 year old grandmother who's on Facebook all the time updating photos. So it, it just depends on the person. Um, telehealth isn't for everybody. For some people, they really prefer to just go in and they have that you know relationship. But the way that this is moving, you are now able to see your own doctor or another doctor. So for some people, it's difficult to get um, you know, out of bed four or five times a week to go in for a checkup that could be a relationship over you know, um, uh, a web meeting or something like that. So I hope that answers your question. Um, Thank you very much, Lindsay. Okay. Will the eventual mapper for providers be searchable by specialty? Yes. Yeah. So we have some very exciting developments coming up. A locator map that is going to have searchable by zip code by your area. So if you're on your phone and you just like if you're looking on maps or something like that and you want to find restaurants nearby, you'll be able to just using the location on your device, find any doctors that are Epic MD doctors in your area. And that's uh, something exciting that we're working on right now that we're hoping to develop uh, in the next couple months. Awesome. What type of doctors are included, excluded from this program? So we have mostly uh, family uh, practitioners as a specialty that do telehealth in our network. Although there are some other, you know, practical applications like uh, psychology and things like that. 
Um, but usually for the bumps and bruises or the antibiotics and things like that, which are the, the vast majority of what people call in for telehealth on, it's the family uh, medicine as a specialty or internal medicine. Got it. Still need to purchase major medical insurance on top of this? That's completely up to you. A lot of people use this as a supplementary uh, option. Um, so that means that anytime, day or night, 24-7, whether they're you know, on vacation in Aruba or whether they're at home, you know, in Texas or Virginia, um, it's something that they can use without having to go in and have that copay. So that's completely up to the individual. Uh, are there any liability issues for the physician who use telehealth? So the physicians that use telehealth, just like any other physician, are covered by their malpractice insurance. It's it's exactly the same as going into any. Um, urgent care where you'd see a new physician and you'd sit down with them and tell them your health record and be seen for that particular visit. You're just doing it virtually. So they're covered as just as a normal doctor uh, under, and of course, as I mentioned, you know, there are different regulations by state. So that's why in the intake form, when you're filling out uh, what state you're a resident of, they will connect you with a doctor that's been specially, you know, licensed within that state. Uh, and that they're well aware of all of the uh, practices for telehealth. Okay. Um, good one to add. I don't know the answer. Any Are veterinarians going to be on the platform? Maybe um, eventually? Maybe eventually. Not not at this time. But that's yeah. you know that's something that might be on the roadmap. I know for a lot of people, their, their fur babies are their real babies, right? What if there is more than five in a family? So the membership does go to five. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, you have the opportunity to add or not add members uh, as your dependents on there. If you don't want to continuously have the health record for all, you know, six or seven people, you could remove one and add the new person and then they would be covered under the plan. So you can't have more than uh, the amount that are allowed. But if, for example, you had another child that you needed to add or another, um, you know, another dependent, you could put them on and remove the other person and make sure that the information is updated and relevant for that, um, that person you're getting coverage for. Okay. What about domestic partners who are covered under health insurance, not married? I think we answered so that. It's your, it's, your, it's your spouse. Got it. Uh, what about children visiting non-custodial parents for eight weeks in the summer for an, from another state? No, those are not dependents. Okay. Okay. Will the MD be able to order lab tests? They can uh, prescribe and they can recommend for lab tests, I believe as well, yes. Yes, it's, a, it's, a standing, it's an order just like a prescription. Mm -hmm. Since the visits are unlimited, what kind of measures are in place to ensure people aren't abusing the system to get multiple scripts written? So for any script, there's national databases for medications that get written. And so, of course, there are groups of people that kind of watchdog groups that, that measure and make sure that you know, people are using things responsibly. Um, I can say that internally, we don't have issues like that. But with regard to prescriptions, those every time a prescription is written, again, that's all uh, noted in a national database. So that's where that's being reviewed. Got it. And also, and also, Jeff, it's for your only non controlled substances can be written for virtual care. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's important to know that no, that no controlled substances can be written up for prescriptions using telehealth. And that's in every state. How many doctors are on the platform? We have a network of over 600 doctors that are available 24-7. Okay. And, and as Lou mentioned, we're planning on bringing doctors on board with our next platform that we're launching in like October. So that number is going to grow exponentially at that point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You are traveling and need to use this. Would you still use the doc in your resident state or where you are currently visiting? You would use where you are a permanent resident. So, for example, if you were international, right, what would you do? You always use the person, the state laws apply to you from the state that you live in, and it will, in fact, match you up with a doctor from your state. So if you were in the Philippines on vacation or something like that, but you were living in Arkansas or, you know, Texas or wherever, you would still leave that as your, your residence because you're just temporarily traveling on, on vacation. Uh, what about a chiropractor? Are they included? Uh, the answer, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. So for any, and then that's a really good question because although they may have follow-up visits, but generally speaking, that's a very physical uh, practice. 
And so you would want to go in in person, right, to have an adjustment or something like that. So a better candidate for a telehealth visit would be something where a doctor needs to look at maybe the pallor of your skin. If you look uh, washed out or ill, or if you have a rash, if you have a sore throat, if you, um, you know, had an earache or something like that. Uh, but something where they have to do a physical um, exam to you is not really a good candidate for telehealth. Lou, you want to chime in on that one too, please? Yeah, well, and speaking to Matt and Jack, the, the, there's, two, there's two things. I, Lindsay's 100%. The, an actual virtual visit or virtual care visit, and with regards to our membership, is primary care based. However, the platform would be available to chiropractors. They could use the platform. They are going to have the ability to set a usual and customary fee. There'll be a mm -hmm. platform fee for that visit and using the, the platform for a virtual consult. And they would be in a position to do nutritional counseling or maybe post, uh, you know, post visit counselings or maybe a, a, a pre visit. If there's a personal injury case, they could use it for a pre a visit consultation or an overview of their case. So, you know, and, and that's for all specialties. So the platform is usable for many specialties and providers for a number of things. And there are revenue, you know, there'll be a revenue model for them. Um, for cash and outside of our membership, but in terms of what Lindsay's sharing tonight, the membership, uh, whether it's the single or the family, and to actually um, see a physician on the cloud, or once the platform is deployed in their practice and they have it, to get uh, paid by Epic MD as a as a credential provider will be primary care based visits. Got it. The vision later on is to expand our list of services to the members to specialties. But that is as we expand our, our company and base. Yeah, and I, I think Lindsay said it in the beginning, which is, I, I want to make sure you understand, Larry, a better focus is primary care internists. That's the primary focus right now. Primary care, family practice, urgent care, pediatrician, yes. OBGYN. They're seeing the majority of primary care. Business. Not to say you can't, but... So it is, I think it's a really powerful distinction, too, that when your doctor gets on here, literally every doctor needs to have a follow up for some reason. And those follow up visits to, to right. are, you would drive 45 minutes to get there and you'd wait 20 minutes to be seen and you'd sit in a chair for five minutes. And that five minutes could very easily be a telehealth consultation, even if it's a post operative. You know, sometimes they even do those and they can do them over telehealth as well. So that, that's a very important distinction to make, guys. Thank you. All right, so this would have been my question. This will be the last question tonight. This would have been my question. Can someone get a doctor note for school or work absolutely. to excuse their absence? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And actually, some of our best testimonials have been from frustrated parents that they can get uh, that morning, right? They can get a, a note from the doctor at the drop of a hat, and it saves them so much pain and suffering. So that's that's a great question. Okay. Um, Lindsay, I really appreciate this. this is awesome. And you're going to see these numbers quadruple. You will see these numbers go to a thousand and then 2000 and then 3000 and beyond. So thank you so much for hosting the first training with Epic MD. We all appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.